welcome to today's quick edit. Today I'm editing this image of a small, about a one and a half inch glass ball on a little stand. You can see the ball itself has had a lot of scratching and stuff done on it. When we moved a few years ago, the uh, moving company did not think that wrapping up all my glass crystal and, and uh, stone uh, balls was necessary, and a lot of them got scratched or chipped or other things. So this one's pretty scratched. This is actually clean. I cleaned it really well before I took the picture, but I like how much texture it's giving it, making it rather than just being a clear ball, it's grabbing that light in there and other things. So I shot this with a Sony a7R III. Let me see, I'm not even sure what, I did use the 90 millimeter uh, f2.8 G macro lens. The light here, I have, so you can see the reflections of some of them. I, you can see this is a aperture F7 light right here with a diffuser on it. You can see some, let me see, I'm not sure what that light is. Oh, I had two flashlights. I had, or I had a flashlight, a small LED flashlight. I'll put a link down in the description for my little flashlights. I love these little lights. A little flashlight uh, kind of stuck to a box. I know I have a behind the scenes picture that I'll probably put up on Instagram in a story in a couple when I get around to it sometime this month. Um, but I just had it clipped, it had a clip on it, had it clipped onto a box. Over here, I've got a little teeny, teeny light. They're about this big. They're from the dollar store. They're meant to stick on your finger. And it's a little, they're like different colors. So you can do, I don't know, little rave things or something. But I use them for little detail lights all the time. So I've just got one sitting here and uh, it's just flat on the table, but the reflection up here is making the blue light come up through here. So I'm gonna start here by getting rid of the reflection from the F7. I, I, it gave it some good, that's what's bringing the light here for the butterfly stand and this little bit of nice light on the bottom, but I don't like the big square reflection in here. So I am just using the healing brush. I did test this before to make sure it was gonna work. And I think it works just fine. Otherwise I would have brought it into, um, actually I could have done a better job on that. But that was me, not, not uh, Lightroom. Um, other, if it didn't do a good job, I would bring it into Photoshop and that would do it much better. I'm going to increase the size here so I can do this all in one swipe. There we go. Bring it down a little better right there. Nope, that was my fault. There, that looks good. Yep, never know that was there. I'm going to leave all the other little reflections going on in there. Uh, this, and just for reference, this light right here, if you can see my notes around, that one's coming from the F7 that I just removed the reflection of. And this harsher light right here on the background, I'm shooting on a uh, roll of black seamless paper. Uh, this light right here is from the flashlight that's shining down through here. All right, so, well, you can look at my histogram and you can see it's really going far to the left. That's because I've got this strong background. I really don't want to move it too much more to the right. You can see, and I've got one highlight blown out, which is to be expected with that kind of thing. So I'm gonna bring the exposure up just a little bit because it's that's pushing the glow pretty good. I push it too hard, it, it starts to fade out the background. I don't wanna do that. Just enough to get that glow going. I'm going to leave the contrast at zero. I'm gonna bring down my highlights. I want the glow, but I don't want that blown out highlight. Okay, I'm gonna bring the shadows up just a tiny bit. I'm gonna leave the whites alone. And I'm also, With it. I'm going to leave the blacks at zero as well. All right, I'm going to bring the clarity up just a tiny bit. It's not, just a tiny bit's not going to affect too much. And if you look at this between zero and see 
bringing up the detail and right in here, it looks nice. Okay, I'm gonna bring up the vibrance and the saturation, that blue to really be glowy. So I'm gonna try and bring up the highlights from in here. I don't wanna blow out them out a little bit. There, I bring up the lights, because I think that bringing them up in here and the shadows, no, don't wanna bring the shadows up. Just gonna leave those where they are. All right, so I'm gonna increase my aqua and my blue saturation. And I'm gonna come into my luminance. I'm going to increase my purple luminance. You can see I'm gonna move it around. You might not think you're seeing a lot of purple there, but there's some in the magenta luminance. And my blue luminance, I'm gonna turn off my clipping now. And that has a nice glow going on to it. Let me see if I can get some more glow. Yeah, up in that yellow luminance, look at the butterfly that's in front. The yellow luminance really brings some good glow to that. Now I'm gonna add a touch of blue to my shadows. Not a harsh thing like that. Just gonna bring it way down. I don't wanna be able, say, so look at the ground here, that's what we're doing. We bring it down to nothing. We just wanna bring the tiniest bit a blue glow to the ground. There we go. That's what I want. So you don't always have to use split toning to make, you know, a really obvious split toned look. This is magenta, a hot magenta and a hot turquoise split toned. You can use it to do that like that to add subtle coloring to your shadows or your highlights. Like since we have a blue light coming in here, it makes sense logically for there to be some blue in the colors around here. So we just added them. You might even want to add, see what happens if we add a tiny bit to the highlights of that. Oh no, that overdoes it. So we're not going to do that. Let's go back to there. So that just gives it a little bit more of an overall blue glow from that light. So in sharpening, I don't want to do much. I'd like to bring a little bit of sharpening to the butterfly stand, if I can just grab that. Let's see. That works. Don't need to do any noise reduction. This is shot at 100 ISO, and you can see even in the black background, there's no noise. I'm using the built-in lens correction that's already been applied. I didn't mean to click there. I'm not doing anything there. No vignette needed. I don't think you'd really even be able to see it. Ooh. I say that, and then I'm gonna leave a little bit there. So I did do a little bit. And I'm gonna come down here to my saturation in my calibration and bring my blue saturation in my calibration up a little bit and bring it just a little bit darker. There, I am happy now with this photo. Uh, thank you for joining me for this quick edit, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Every day, I share a new photo on Instagram, Patreon, and my website. On Instagram, I share the Instagram ratio cropped image. On Patreon, I share the uncropped image, and my patrons can download either the web resolution or the full high resolution image every day, along with a weekly Lightroom preset based on one of the week's daily photos. Prints are available on my website at terrymcclary.com. Patreon supporters can also get discount codes to use on prints. Every day, I also post a quick edit video here on YouTube where I edit the photo of the day. To get the daily quick edit video in your YouTube feed, make sure to subscribe. If you already subscribe, ring the bell down below to get notifications when new videos are posted.